Polish United Workers Party The Polish United Workers Party was the Communist Party which governed the Polish People's Republic from 1948 to 1989. Ideologically it was based on the theories of Marxism-Leninism. It also controlled the armed forces, the Polish People's Army. Until 1989, the propelled dictatorial powers, and controlled an unwieldy bureaucracy, the military, the secret police and the economy. Its main goal was to create a communist society and help to propagate communism all over the world. On paper, the party was organized on the basis of democratic centralism, which assumed a democratic appointment of authorities, making decisions, and managing its activity. Yet in fact, the key roles were played by its central committee, its politburo and secretariat, which were subject to the strict control of the authorities of the Soviet Union. Those authorities decided about the policy and composition of the main organs, although, according to the statute, it was a responsibility of the members of Congress, which was held every five or six years. Between sessions, party conferences of the regional, county, district and work committees were taking place. The smallest organizational unit of the PUP was the fundamental party organization, which functioned in workplaces, schools, cultural institutions, etc. The main part in the PUP was played by professional politicians, or the so-called party's hardcore, formed by people who were recommended to manage ethy main state institutions, social organizations, and trade unions. In the crowning time of the PUP's development it consisted of over 3.5 million members. The political office of the Central Committee, Secretariat and Regional Committees appointed the key posts not only within the party, but also in all organizations having state in its name, from central offices to even small state and cooperative companies. It was called the nomenclature system of the state and economy management. In certain areas of the economy, for example, in agriculture, the nomenclature system was controlled with an approval of the PUP and by its allied parties, the United People's Party, and the Democratic Party. After martial law began, the patriotic movement for national rebirth was founded to organize these and other parties. The Polish United Workers' Party was established at the Unification Congress of the Polish Workers' Party and Polish Socialist Party during meeting shield from 15 to December 21, 1948. The unification was possible because the PPS activists who opposed unification had been forced out of the party. Similarly, the members of the PPR who were accused of rightist, nationalistic deviation were expelled. Thus, for all intents and purposes, the PUP was the PPR under a new name. Rightist nationalist deviation was a political propaganda term used by the Polish Stalinists against prominent activists, such as Władysław Gomułka and Marian Spachowski who opposed Soviet involvement in the Polish interior affairs, as well as internationalism displayed by the creation of the Common Form and the subsequent merger that created the PZPR. It is believed that it was Joseph Stalin who put pressure on Bolesław Birut and Jakub Berman to remove Gomułka and Spachowski as well as their followers from power in 1948. It is estimated that over 25% of socialists were removed from power or expelled from political life. Bolislav Birut, an NKVD agent and a hard Stalinist, served as first secretary general of the ruling PUP from 1948 to 1956, playing a leading role in the Sovietization of Poland and the installation of one of its most repressive regimes. He had served as president since 1944. After a new constitution abolished the presidency, Biru took over as prime minister, a post he held until 1954. He remained party leader until his death in 1956. Biru oversaw the trials of many Polish wartime military leaders, such as General Stanislaw Tatar and Brig. General Emil August Fieldorf, as well as 40 members of the Wilnia Chinese Wislisk organization, various church officials and many other opponents of new regime including Witold Polacki, condemned to death during secret trials. Biarut signed many of those death sentences. Biarut's mysterious death in Moscow in 1956 gave rise to much speculation about poisoning or a suicide, and symbolically marked the end of Stalinism era in Poland. In 1956, shortly after the 20th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the PUP leadership split in two factions, dubbed Natalinians and Polawians. The Natolan faction, named after the place where its meetings took place, in a government villa in Natolan, were against the post-Stalinist liberalization programs and they proclaimed simple nationalist and anti-Semitic slogans as part of a strategy to gain power. The most well-known members included Franciszek Jozwiak, Viktor Klojuics, Zenon Novak, Aleksander Zawadzki, Władysław Dworakowski, 
Hilary Chelchowski. The Pulawian faction, the name comes from the Pulaska Street in Warsaw, on which many of the members lived, sought great liberalization of socialism in Poland. After the events of Poznan in June, they successfully backed the candidature of Władysław Gomułka for first secretary of party, thus imposing a major setback upon Natalinians. Among the most prominent members were Roman Zambrowski and Leon Kassman. Both factions disappeared towards the end of the 1950s. Initially very popular for his reforms and seeking a Polish way to socialism, and beginning an era known as Gomułka's Thaw, he came under Soviet pressure. In the 1960s, he supported persecution of the Roman Catholic Church and intellectuals. He participated in the Warsaw Pact intervention in Czechoslovakia in 1968. At that time he was also responsible for persecuting students as well as toughening censorship of the media. In 1968 he incited an anti-Zionist propaganda campaign, as a result of Soviet bloc opposition to the Six-Day War. In December 1970, a bloody clash with shipyard workers in which several dozen workers were fatally shot forced his resignation. A dynamic younger man, Edward Gierak, took over the party leadership and tensions eased. In the late 1960s, Edward Gierak had created a personal power base and become the recognized leader of the young technocrat faction of the party. When rioting over economic conditions broke out in late 1970, Gierak replaced Władysław Gomułka as party first secretary. Gierak promised economic reform and instituted a program to modernize industry and increase the availability of consumer goods, doing so mostly through foreign loans. His good relations with Western politicians, especially France's Valérie's Cardestain and West Germany's Helmut Schmidt, were a catalyst for his receiving Western aid and loan. The standard of living improved in Poland of the 1970s, the economy however, began to falter during the 1973 oil crisis, and by 1976 price hikes became necessary. New riots broke out in June 1976, and although they were forcibly suppressed, the planned price increases were suspended. High foreign debts, food shortages, and an outmoded industrial base compelled the new round of economic reforms in 1980. Once again, price increases set off protests across the country, especially in the Gdansk and Szczecin shipyards. Gierek was forced to grant legal status to solidarity and to concede the right to strike. Shortly thereafter, in early September 1980, Gierek was replaced as by Stanislaw Kania as general secretary of the party by the Central Committee. Amidst much social and economic unrest, Kania admitted that the party had made many economic mistakes and advocated working with Catholic and trade unionist opposition groups. He met with Solidarity Union leader Lech Valenza and other critics of the party. Though Kania agreed with his predecessors that the Communist Party must maintain control of Poland, he never assured the Soviets that Poland would not pursue actions independent of the Soviet Union. On October 18, 1981, the Central Committee of the Party withdrew confidence on him, and Kania was replaced by Prime Minister General Wojciech Jaruzelski. On 11 February 1981, Jaruzelski was elected Prime Minister of Poland and became the first secretary of the Polish United Workers' Party on October 18, 1981. Before initiating the plan of suppressing the Solidarity, he presented it to Soviet Premier Nikolai Tikhanov. On 13 December 1981, Jaruzelski imposed martial law in Poland. In 1982 Jaruzelski revitalized the Front of National Unity, the organization the Communists used to manage their satellite parties, as the Patriotic Movement for National Rebirth. In 1985, Jaruzelski resigned as Prime Minister and Defense Minister and became Chairman of the Polish Council of State a post equivalent to that of president or a dictator, with his powers centered on and firmly entrenched in his coterie of LWP generals and lower ranks officers of the Polish People's Army. The attempt to impose a naked military dictatorship, notwithstanding, the policies of Mikhail Gorbachev stimulated political reform in Poland. By the close of the 10th plenary session in December 1988, the Polish United Workers' Party was forced, after strikes, to approach leaders of solidarity for talks. From 6 February to April 15, 1989, negotiations were held between 13 working groups during 94 sessions of the roundtable talks. These negotiations resulted in an agreement which stated that a great degree of political power would be given to a newly created bicameral legislature. It also created a new post of president to act as head of state and chief executive. Solidarity was also declared a legal organization. During the following Polish elections, the communists won 65% of the seats in the same, 
though the seats won were guaranteed and the communists were unable to gain a majority, while 99 out of the 100 seats in the Senate freely contested were won by solidarity backed candidates. Jaruzelski won the presidential ballot by one vote. Jaruzelski was unsuccessful in convincing Valenza to include solidarity in a grand coalition with the communists, and resigned his position of general secretary of the Polish United Workers' Party. The PCPR two allied parties broke their long-standing alliance, forcing Jaruzelski to appoint Solidarity's Tadeusz Mazowiecki as the country's first non-communist prime minister since 1948. Jaruzelski resigned as Poland's president in 1990, being succeeded by Valenza in December. Starting from January 1990, the collapse of the PUC became inevitable. All over the country, public occupations of the party buildings started in order to prevent stealing the party's possessions and destroying or taking the archives. On January 29, 1990, 11 Congress was held, which was supposed to recreate the party. Finally, the PUC dissolved, and some of its members decided to establish two new social democratic parties. They get over $1 million from the Communist Party of the Soviet Union known as the Moscow Loan. The former activists of the PUP established the Social Democracy of the Republic of Poland, of which the main organizers were Leszek Miller and Mieczysław Lorakowski. The SDRP was supposed to take over all rights and duties of the PUP, and help to divide out the property of the former PUP. Up to the end of the 1980s, it had considerable incomes mainly from managed properties and from the RSW company press book traffic, which in turn had special tax concessions. During this period, the income from membership fees constituted only 30% of the PUP's revenues. After the dissolution of the PUP and the establishment of the SDRP, the rest of the activists formed the Social Democratic Union of the Republic of Poland, which changed its name to the Polish Social Democratic Union, and the 8th July Movement. At the end of 1990, there was an intense debate in the same on the takeover of the wealth that belonged to the former PUP. Over 3,000 buildings and premises were included in the wealth and almost half of it was used without legal basis. Supporters of the acquisition argued that wealth was built on the basis of plunder and the treasury grant collected by the whole society. Opponents of SDRP claimed that the wealth was created from membership fees, therefore, they demanded wealth inheritance for SDPR which at that time administered the wealth. Personal property and the accounts of the former PUP were not subject to control of a parliamentary committee. On November 9, 1990, the same passed the resolution about the acquisition of the wealth that belonged to the former PUP. This resolution was supposed to result in a final takeover of the PUP real estate by the Treasury. As a result, only a part of the real estate was taken over main life for a local government by 1992 whereas a legal dispute over the other party carried on till 2000. Personal property and finances of the former PUP practically disappeared. According to the declaration of SDRP members of parliament, 90-95% to of the party's wealth was allocated for gratuity or was donated for a social assistance. The Central Committee had its seat in the party's house, a building erected by obligatory subscription from 1948 to 1952 and colloquially called White House or the House of Sheep. Since 1991 the Bank Financial Center New World is located in this building. From 1991 to 2000 the Warsaw Stock Exchange also had its seat there. By the year 1954 the head of the party was the chair of Central Committee. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.